<laughs> Woo! Man, I got one word for this video. I'm going to borrow it from the so-called Jamaicans. Fire! Yo, this video is fire! <laughs> Blood clot fire! <laughs> yeah, man. Um, all praises and glory is due to Yahweh Barsham Yahshad Barsham Rakakwadash for giving us this knowledge, man, this truth, this understanding. The greatest understanding on the planet Earth, bar none, this knowledge, this truth. And um, I was watching this video by uh, Elder Malcolma. That's a beautiful brother, man. Let me put it to you this way. I'll be shocked if he ain't a man of the Lord, man. I'll just leave it at that. That brother's humble, you know. Got a beautiful spirit. But, um... He put up this video entitled um, Esau Thing is Disturbing uh, Christians, Edom, Esau. Let me say something about this woman here. She knows, she knows more. She understands the scriptures better than vocab. <laughs> I hope you watch it, vocab. You tit. She knows more than you concerning the scriptures. She makes more logical sense than you do, vocab. Okay? Anyway, I had to say that. Uh, like I said, I was watching this video and I was inspired to do the video that I'm about to do right now. Shalom to uh, Elder Malcolma of uh, GMS Chicago. And here's the title of this video. So when were the chosen ones chosen? And just to remind you, I'm doing a 10-part series, which I will go back to. I believe we're up to part number eight. Uh, so look for that video, Lord willing, during the course of this day. But like I said, I was inspired to do this video by watching Elder Malcolm, Elder Malcolm's video. <coughs> And um, again, the title is, So When Were the Chosen Ones Chosen? First of all, who are the chosen ones? Let's deal with that. You know, Yahweh Shai gave a clue when he um, mentioned about the true worshipers. And we could find that in jo the book of John, the fourth chapter. <clears throat> and really, the chosen ones began with um, uh, Yahweh Shai and his disciples, which took place more than 2,000 years ago. Yahweh Shai and his disciples, which became apostles. That's where the house of the elect starts. They're also known as the tabernacle of David. Okay, the tabernacle of David. It starts with Yahweh Shai and his disciples, which became apostles. And, and like I said, that was more than 2,000 years ago. Now, what the wacky-tacky Christian don't realize is there's a little thing called reincarnation. So, throughout the generations, right, going back more than 2,000 years ago, throughout the generations, the members of the elect kept coming back over and over again. They kept being regenerated into the planet Earth over and over again. You know, except Yahweh Shai. Because Yahweh Shai, once he uh, died and was resurrected, his position as being head of the elect <coughs> is to be right next to his father, Yahweh. That's the position that he, that he had, that he has, that he acquired more than 2,000 years ago, and that he has. And we know this to be true by many scriptures that prove that Yahweh Shai is, Yahweh Shai is sitting at the right hand of the Father, even as I speak. That's his position. Now, the rest of the elect, through their generations, they've been coming back over and over again. All right? On the planet Earth. <coughs> and in these last days, the last days of Esau's society, Esau's kingdom, 
they had been regenerated. They came back, did what they had to do, which we call our elders, beginning with Rabbi Abba Bivens, he's part of that elect, the house of the elect. He did what he had to do, teaching this gospel, teaching this word. Then there was men that were chosen by him to continue the work. King Marsha, Elder High Priest Arya, Elder High Priest Yaikwab, and then uh, Elder High Priest Shaw. Those were the titles, right? <clears throat> they continued the work. And all the way down to beginning with Elder Pastor and then myself and Elder Apostle Rakar and then Elder Apostle Ramlab and the bishops of Connecticut, we have continued the work. And, you know, there are other Israelites out there, even among the different groups that are part of the elect, at least that's what we believe. And when the time comes, the Lord will bring them into the fold, you know, the true worshipers as it were. So what you have just heard is a legacy of the knowledge of the truth, which we've been carrying, okay, ever since going back to the time of Yahweh Shai when he, when he had chose his disciples, which became apostles. So this is, shall we say, a, a 2,000 year legacy. And Yahweh Shai was the first one to start it off, all right? Like the song set it off, Yahweh Shai was the first one to set it off. Okay, he's the head of the elect. So, another title for the elect is the chosen ones or the true worshipers. And the thing is, when we go back to the title of this video, so when were the chosen ones, so when were the chosen ones chosen? That's the question we're going to answer in this video. They were chosen even before the earth was created by the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. A certain amount of spirits, that because we're nothing but spirits and bodies. Hell, even the police, the group, the police knew that. They saw spirits in the material world. I always reference that song, which uh, the, the uh, artist uh, Gordon Sumner, better known as Sting, uh, penned that song. We are spirits in the material world. Indeed. You know, one of the titles of the Heavenly Father is the Father of Spirits, all right? Even the, our brothers, the so-called North American Indians, they call the Most High the Great Spirit because you got spirits and then you have the Great Spirit, all right? So spirits never die. Spirits are pure energy. And what happens is they kept being reincarnated into new bodies every time they came on the planet Earth. It's called generation, folks. It's called generations, generated, generation, generations, generation, generation. Anything generated keeps coming back over and over again. And this, this, this understanding eclipses the wacky tacky Christian. You know, morons like vocab, okay? <laughs> they simply don't get it. To them, reincarnation is a foreign concept. Anyway. So, again, the chosen ones were chosen even before the earth was created. Okay, so everything, what you're going to learn is everything has been predestinated by the Heavenly Father. And we're going to read the scripture. But let's read the book of John 4 and 23. Because Yahweh Shai talks about this true worshippers, which is another title for the elect or the chosen ones. Okay, this is the book of John 4 and 22. It says, you worship. Now, he was talking to this woman who was boasting about how Jacob was her, her father. And, you know, and uh, how basically she was telling you how she's of the ilk of uh, the nation of Israel. She's of the nation of Israel, which was totally false. Okay. She wasn't an Israelite. She was a <clears throat> she was a heathen. All right, a woman that lived in Samaria. Now, if you know the history, you know how converts were brought into the land of Samaria to replace the the northern kingdom that had been kicked out of there and went into Assyrian captivity. 
and then ultimately it went into um, the Americas. Okay, and we can read about that account in the Apocrypha, in in uh, the book of uh, Second Esdras, the thirteenth chapter, if you know that history. So when the Northern Kingdom was kicked out of the land of Samaria, and the majority of them, converts were brought in. So much so that the converts they couldn't. When when I say converts. They were taught our laws and ways, but they couldn't keep it properly. So the, the Heavenly Father, there's a scripture where it speaks about how the Heavenly Father sent lions among them to kill them. You know? <coughs> and they couldn't keep our laws, statutes, and commandments. Uh, they couldn't keep it perfectly because they were heathens. Alright? They are heathens. The only ones who can keep the laws, statutes, and commandments perfectly is the nation of Israel. And even, even the Israelites have to be made perfect. We have to be brought under the new covenant to keep the laws, statutes, and commandments perfectly. And then we'll be able to teach. This is pursuant to Isaiah, the second chapter, and this is going to happen in the kingdom. Then we'll be able to teach the other nations the laws, statutes, and commandments. All right? So, this woman is boasting about how Jacob is her father. As a matter of fact, here is the verse right here. The 12th verse, John 4 and 12. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? And like I said, this woman was not an Israelite. This woman was a heathen, that one of the converts that were brought to the land of Samaria. Okay, in order to replace the northern kingdom that had been cast out of there, had went into captivity. The northern kingdom led by the tribe of Ephraim. You have to know the history. We had Great Millstone. We have a saying: if you don't know the history, you won't know. You won't know or understand the mystery. You have to know the history. So here, Yahushai, he uh, he goes on to correct her. He says this, Yahushua answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. Um, bear with me for a minute, I might have jumped. I might have jumped ahead. <coughs> Matter of fact, um, yeah, so he proceeds to break down this woman's life he even tells her that you've had you you've had more than one husband this woman was basically a whore <laughs> basically all right and because right here in the 16th verse Yahweh said unto her go call thy husband and come hither the woman answered and said I have no husband Yahweh said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. <laughs> For thou hast had five husbands. God damn. Five. Now, in the book of Jeremiah, it says if, a, if a, a woman, as a matter of fact, let's go to Jeremiah. So this woman was a super hoe. <laughs> she was a super hoe. Hey, she, she'd fit, well, she's back in the spirit. She's, she's, she's back in the reincarnation, whoever that, that woman was back then she's back here now and she's you better believe she's fit right in with this 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 whorish culture that we're in right now whoredom is at an ulti ultimate high an all-time high right now man whoredom anyway this is the book of jeremiah 3 and 1 now look at the subheading the polluted land that's these women these women are the polluted land their land is polluted. And you know what I mean by their land, meaning their vagina, man. They say if a man put away his wife and she go from him, this is Jeremiah 3 and 1, and become another man's, shall he return, shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? What does it mean by the land? That's a metaphor for her vagina. Because now she got a different sperm in there. And different sperms don't mix. That's where that's a breeding ground for diseases. You know, to quote the words of Tommy Sotomayor, he said that 
if, uh, he said that years ago. He said uh, he, the average, and you know, he was always getting on the so-called black woman. He said the average so-called black woman, their vagina is like a petri dish of destruction. <laughs> he said their vagina is like a petri dish of destruction. Now, if you know your science, you know what what the petri dishes were used for. They were used to study viruses. You know, the virus was put on a petri dish and the, the magnifying glass was used to look at the virus underneath the magnifying glass to examine it. So he said the so-called black woman's vagina is a petri dish of destruction. And I have to agree, the majority of them, <coughs> due to the fact that, <coughs> that they are, are allowed to be whores. The culture is actually pushed. You know, you have the, the latest cartoon clown that's put before them is uh, this Megan the Stallion, which is a complete poppy show, a complete cartoon, Megan the Stallion. And what is she pushing? She, he, it, whatever. Whoredom, man. And these simple minded women are following that image. And once again, you can thank Esau for that. What do you expect from the wicked? And they're in rulership, by the way. Job 9 and 24, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. There you go. So right here we're reading that if a woman, and this is just one man, if a woman has one man outside of her husband, that's just one man, her land has, great, has become greatly polluted, her vagina. So imagine this woman who have had five husbands. Huh? Let me finish reading that scripture. It says, they say, if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man, shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. What's another term for the, the word harlot? A whore. A whore. Okay. Thou hast played the harlot with many lovers, yet again return Yet return again to me, saith the Lord. And again, this is a culture that's pushed in this society. Women actually glorify in having many men. All right, having laid down with many men. They actually glorify in that, in, in that madness. Not knowing that their land is greatly polluted. Something for you women to consider. Your land is, has been greatly polluted. All right, so that's why I use that analogy in, in scripture. To explain this, showing you that this woman here that Yahweh Shai was talking to and she was boasting to Yahweh Shai about Jacob being her father, yet here, here she has she's had five husbands and the one she was living with make, made her six husband. Because let, let's read it. John 4 and 17, the woman answered and said, I have no husband. Yahweh Shai said unto her, thou has well said, I have no husband. For thou has had five husbands. So this woman was a super hoe. And she, she, she's tame compared to the women of today. Easily the women of today, man, they've had more than 30, 40 partners. That's why they're so bugged out in the mind, man. These women are gone, man. I was discussing that with Elder Manatzak uh, of the main camp. We were talking about these women and how, how, they're, how they're gone. I mean, they're gone. It's, you're not even... How do I put this? You'll be wasting your time trying to go up to them and talk to them, man. And they're so proud. You know, I was tell, I said to Elder Manad Zak, I said, Man, 20 years ago, you come up to a woman and talk to her, had, you know, kick it with her. You can't even really do that now. Okay, you got the Me Too movement, you know? That's why the society has to be destroyed. But anyway, for thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now has, so that's, that make the six, is not thy husband, and in that saidest thou truly. So now we're going to get to the point here, right? So she keeps boasting. She's saying, our fathers worship in this mountain. And ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. That's right. Yahweh Shai was right when he said that. 
There's this woman trying to school Yahushai. <laughs> Yahushai was right when he said that, that Jerusalem is the place of worship. Jerusalem is going to be the top city on the planet Earth, man. Jerusalem is going to be rebuilt too. After it's destroyed by the nuclear destruction, it's going to be rebuilt by our slaves. The city of Jerusalem. It's going to be the baddest city on the planet Earth, man. As a matter of fact, you can read about that in the book of Revelation, the 21st chapter. There's a vision that the Apostle John, the island of Patmos, that he saw concerning Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem. You're going to have streets of gold and the whole nine, man. And we even had a brother from England. His wife confirmed it with that dream that she had, which was actually a vision. She saw herself in the kingdom. Mind you, she looks like a so-called white woman, according to what the brother was saying. But she saw herself as a so-called black woman in the kingdom. And we've been saying this. We've been saying that all you Israelites out there that look like so-called white people in this thing of ours, you're going to get your pigment back. You're going to get your look back. And by the same token, all these Jakes out there that are really Edomites, guess what? When they come back, they're going to look like Edomites. So this thing, <laughs> this thing is, man, there's nothing more powerful than this knowledge, man. That's what everybody's going to come to realize. That we have the truth. We have the 100% truth. But anyway, let's keep reading. It says, Our fathers worship in this mountain. He say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. That's right. Yahweh Shai said unto her, Woman, now Yahweh Shai, I know Yahweh Shai was getting mad too. Like, like, this woman dare speak to me like this? If she even knew who I was, you know, hey, Yahweh Shai was the ultimate Jake, man. Uh, Yahweh Shai said unto her, Woman, yeah, a woman, a woman that was a hoe, a super hoe. Five, even back then, five husbands? My goodness. How shall I say unto her, woman, believe me, <laughs> the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Why? Because she was a fucking heathen, man. Excuse my Italian. She was a effing heathen. Got some Israelite. Now nah, the woman was an Israelite. What? Can you read? Do you have understanding? Oh, ye slow of mind. You got a lot of slow of mind uh, cats that are in this truth, man. And slow of mind, that's another way of saying retarded. Look, learn the meaning of your words. Retard is um, a word that means slow or late of mind. That's what it actually means. Re means back. Tardy. Is from the Italian meaning late. So you're late of mind. You're slow. Retard. And you got a lot of retards in this thing of ours, man. I'll just tell you like it is. Anyway, this woman was not an Israelite. That's why Yahweh Shai told her. If she was an Israelite, why would Yahweh Shai tell her this? Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship you know not what. You don't know what the hell you're worshiping. And that can be said for a lot of these wacky tacky Christians. They worship, but they haven't got a clue what the hell they're worshiping. Okay, and there's so many holes in their doctrine that we that, that we can point out. First of all, a lot of them worship on Sunday. Where in the Bible do you see the word Sunday? Huh? They'll tell you Sunday is the first day of the week. Oh, really? Where's the word Sunday? in the scriptures in, in in the original text it doesn't exist man we, we the, us israelites we didn't put names on the dates like san de man de tools de wednesday you know inside joke that's from the movie uh, godfather you know the italian woman that was telling mike michael corleone i can speak english you know san de man de tools de wednesday <laughs> we didn't do that man we had the first day of the week, the second day of the week, the third day of the week, the fifth day of the month, of the second month, or the third day of the seventh month. You know, you get the idea. We did not put names on the days of the week, and certainly on the days of the month, or, yeah, on the month. Okay, because days turn into weeks, and weeks turn into months, right? By the way, the word month means moon. That's what, it, that's, that's what it means. And the word week means change. Look it up. Research. If you go to the etymology dictionary, you look up the word week, you will learn that it means change. What changes during the week? 
the moon, the phases of the moon. And that's where you get your month from, during the phases of the moon. Okay? Anyway, that's another video for another time. It says, ye worship, <coughs> excuse me, ye worship, you know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews, as in the Israelites. The reason why the term Jew is used there, because that's predominantly what you had back then, during the time of our Lord. You really had three main tribes. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, but you had a scattering of the other tribes too. That's why James, the brother of Yahweh Shai, when he wrote his letter to the 12 tribes, which is scattered abroad, greeted. And when he, meant, when he said scattered abroad, he meant outside of Jerusalem. Okay, outside of Jerusalem. Outside of Jerusalem, outside of the land of Israel. You had Israelites scattered all around. You had a main group of Israelites in, in uh, Egypt. You had something called the Alexandrian Jews. They were Israelites that lived in Egypt because the city was colonized by Alexander the Great. All right? And the city was named Alexandria in Egypt after his death. You got to know the history, man. You got to know the history to understand the mystery. So it says, ye worship, you know not what. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews, meaning the Israelites. So salvation is only for the Israelites. This whole thing of ours is based upon the Israelites. It's only for the Israelites. The Israelites are the chosen people of the Lord. Point blank, end of story, vocab. Okay? It's all about the Israelites. The Bible was only given to the Israelites. Psalms 147, 19 and 20. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. And really, anyone who's not an Israelite, they're worshiping, but they don't know what the hell they're worshiping. Just like Yahweh I told this woman, who was a heathen. She was not an Israelite. He told her, look, you're worshiping, you don't know what the hell you're worshiping. Then he proceeds to tell her this, which is the, uh, the uh, reason for this video. He proceeds to say this to her. But the hour cometh, and now is, we're living in, in that time now. It started with Yahweh Shai more than 2,000 years ago. But we're in the twilight, the twilight of that time now. Now. N-O-W. Now. What Yahweh Shai is about to say here, this is happening now. But the, but the hour cometh, and now is. We're in that hour now. Now is. When the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. There you go. What's another title for that? The elect, the chosen ones. And they were chosen, those spirits were chosen even before the earth was created. Even before the earth was created. So that answers our question. When were the chosen ones chosen? The true worshipers. They were chosen even before the earth was created. Okay? Now how powerful is that? Because remember, no one dies to the Heavenly Father. Even Yahweh Shai said it. He said, for, for they all live to the Heavenly Father. Even when you so-called die, you're not dead. Your spirit goes before the throne of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son and the angels to be judged for what you did in the physical body. The wacky-tacky Christian, Christian doesn't understand that. They have very little understanding. That's why Yahweh Shai told, just like that woman, Yahweh Shai told her, you worship, you don't know what the hell you worship it. That can be said to all you wacky-tacky Christians out here in your different religions, your different madness. <laughs> you worship, you don't know what the hell you're worshiping. Right now, the Lord is looking for the true worshipers, man. Are you a true worshiper? The answer is no. If you believe in plantation Christianity, the answer is no. You're not a true worshiper. Heavenly Father ain't dealing with you. He hasn't shown you his intimate secrets like he did to the, his servants, the prophets. He ain't dealing with you, man. You're just wasting your time. Whether you call yourself Baptist, Catholic, Method, all that nonsense. Muslim, Muslim. Lord ain't dealing with you. Uh, but you people, you, you'll come to realize that. Just like this woman came to realize. Hold up. Let's bring her back on screen. Where's she at? Just like this Where woman came to realize that she's been taught a lie. She was dropping it, man. Like I said, she knows a lot more than vocab, dude. Vocab is still caught up in the mist. This woman is coming out of the mist based upon statements that she was making concerning the scriptures. And there's another video of this Jake 
all right um the brother from baltimore he did a video on on the subject and his jake covered with tattoos like a so-called mexican <laughs> right he was asking some pointed questions that he said the pastors can't can't explain or or um or um, or interpret you know they they can't explain the questions he was asking you know they can't break it down okay as this knowledge gets out there these these phony ass pastors they're being put on trial man and they're being exposed their incompetence their ineptitude concerning the scriptures is being exposed okay uh, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Right. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. They're the ones that he have chosen. Which is the elect. Let's go to Isaiah 45 and 4. Then we're going to go to Romans 11 and 7. And we call ourselves around here, Great Millstone, we call ourselves the hopeful elect. Because we don't want to be proud with it. We can't we don't want to say we, we just know that we know we're it we we know that we're Israelites. We know that much. We know by the by the spirit, Romans 8 and 16. We know that we're Israelites. But there's an elect out of the elect. The elect nation is Israel, but there's an elect out of the elect. Now, do we know that we're of that group for sure? No, we don't. That's why the scriptures say uh, to give diligence to make our calling and election sure. Now, if we survive in this ministry all the way to the end, if we keep our integrity like Yahweh Shai kept his, then we know for a fact we're, of, we're members of Yahweh Shai's elect. Because when Yahweh Shai comes back, who's he going to gather? As a matter of fact, right? Check this out. We just read what Yahweh Shai said to this whore, <laughs> the super hoe, this woman, right? Yahweh Shai said to her, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Now when our Lord comes back, who's he going to gather, huh? Is he going to gather everybody? Well, let's go to it. Let's go to Matthew. The same true worshippers that he told this woman about, that's who he's going to gather. The elect of the nation of Israel, man. Okay, Matthew 24. I mean, it's... It, it This is beautiful. It fits like a glove. This kind of information fits like a glove. Okay? It makes sense. Unlike the madness that the wacky-tacky Christian teaches you. Or that the pastor teaches the wacky-tacky Christian. And they try to teach you. Matthew 24 and 30. Let's read about who Yahweh is going to gather. The true worshippers. The elect of the nation of Israel. And you're going to see it's of the nation of Israel when I read... Isaiah 45 and 4 and Romans 11 and 7. Matthew 24 and 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. This is when our Lord, this, this prophecy hasn't even happened yet. We're waiting for it to happen. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Why? Because Yahweh Shai is going to be killing a lot of people, man. A lot of people are going to die on that day. And Yahweh Shai is going to be at the helm of it. Yahweh Shai and the angels. He's coming back with an army of angels. Michael, Michael the archangel will be one of them. And that's pursuant to the prophecy in the book of Daniel, uh, Daniel, the 12th chapter. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds. Those are the so-called UFOs, the chariots. And even now, the, the angels that are in the chariots are starting to make themselves known. Okay, there's been reports, it, uh, particularly in the uh, country of Peru, which they see the chariots all the time. Peru, that country over there, they see the chariots all the time, the so-called UFOs. Now the angels have been making their presence known. Those are not aliens. Those are angels. Okay. Anyway, they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So there, there's a day coming where the whole the, the skies of these of this planet Earth will be invaded by so-called UFOs, chariots of the Lord. Within them are angels, and the Lord is going to be leading them. Isaiah 31 and 5. That's the prophecy in Isaiah 31 and 5. They shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And we're waiting for that day patiently. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect. That's the true worshippers that he told that super hoe about. 
who had five husbands and was working on the sixth. <laughs> he told her, the Lord is looking for the heavenly father. His father is looking for the true worshipers, the elect. And those those members of the elect are on the, on the planet Earth now, the majority of them. You have some of them that are in the spirit world. And, and the scriptures talk about that. Those that die in the Lord, right? They shall be delivered first. Come out the graves, as it were. Go right into the chariots. And then the rest of us will be taken into the chariots. As it is written. Okay? So, all the elect are present and accounted for. Okay? It says, they shall gather together the elect. So, the angels are going to help Yahweh Shai gather his elect from the four winds... And they're all, got, uh, according to Elder Pastor, they're all going to be gathered into one major chariot. The chariot that Yahweh Shai is coming in, the, the prophet Ezra said it looked like a mountain. It was so big. The prophet Ezra saw it in the vision. It's recorded in the book of uh, Second Ezra. The chariot that the Lord is going to be in is it, it, going to be so huge, it looked like it, it's going to look like a mountain. That's how big it is. So that chariot is able to hold all the elect of Yahweh Shai. All right, the men, the, the men, the women, and the children. All right, so that's going to be a that's going to be a glorious day, man. <clears throat> Excuse me. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. There you go. All right. So now let's talk about the elect. Okay, who are the elect? And this is for those of you that are new. You've been lied to by plantation christianity telling you god loves everyone you, you gotta wake we gotta wake the hell up man like this woman woke the hell up she was asking some making some good points and asking some some serious questions like i said she knows a lot more than vocab uh isaiah 45 and 4 and, and i'm pretty sure she didn't have to go to no seminary to acquire her knowledge She's just been watching us Israelites. You get guaranteed that woman been watching us, man. Because we've been on YouTube since the summer of 2007. And we, you know, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Barshim Yahshai, beginning to fell the pastor, we've made a major impact in, in the theological world, man. Major impact. Why? Because we're the, we're the servants, the prophets of the Lord. That's who we are. Coming back in the reincarnation, we are the prophets of the Lord, the servants of the Lord, his apostles, the prophets, the teachers, that's who the Lord is, is, is looking for now. Like Yahweh Shai said, the true worshipers, they know the truth. They're the ones set up to teach. They're the ones ordained to teach, not these phony ass pastors. That's why all of them are being re exposed and being revealed. All right. These phony ass pastors, man, these phony churches, they're all being exposed and revealed. Anyway, Isaiah 45 and 4. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect. There you go. I have called thee by, by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. Well, you might have a simple-minded person jump up and say, well, that's the Old Testament. It changed with the New Testament. You know, you always have these simple-minded jakes with the pork, ju pork, pork juice dripping out of their, the side of their mouth. Always... Quick to jump up talking about it. Well, that's the Old Testament. What about the New Testament? What is that in the New Testament? Can't even pronounce their words correctly. <laughs> Romans 11 and 7. Here it is. Here's the New Testament. Oh, simple-minded Negro. What then Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for? But the election. The election out of what nation? The nation of Israel. The election comes out of the nation of Israel. You simple-minded Negro. With your pork juice dripping out of your mouth. That's the Old Testament. You read the Old Testament. What about the New Testament? What's that in the New Testament? Well, I'm reading you the New Testament. What then Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election. So there's an election, folks. You can't just choose the Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father do the choosing, not you. I've done a video on that. But the election have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. The rest of what? The rest of the nation of Israel were blinded. So not even any Israelite can come and serve the Lord. The Lord is very meticulous. He's very particular about who serves him and how they serve him. You don't know the Heavenly Father, man. You people with this come-as-you-are doctrine. 
What the hell are you talking about, man? The Lord is very meticulous. He's very particular on how you serve him. <laughs> the Most High is not a poppy show, man. You can't take the Most High if he fool, like the so-called Jamaicans say. You can't take the Most High if he fool, man. Most High ain't no fool, man. That's the that's the king of this universe. That's the Most High. All right. Even the. Let me give you an example. Something you can identify with. Take a let's take a look at this this loser Joe Biden, right? You think you can just roll up on Joe Biden and say, hey, Joe, how you doing? And shake his hand. No, man. He's the president of the United States. Even though he's a lowlife and he's a scumbag, he's held in high regard. He's, he's held in high esteem because of his position. And that's Joe Biden. How much more the heavenly father, the king of the universe, the most high. You, you starting to get the picture now? <sighs> Very, the Lord is very meticulous on, on, on how he does his thing, man. And every work that the Heavenly Father does, he does it with a delicate balance. That's what you people don't get, you wacky-tacky Christian. He deals with balance. Everything must balance out each other. Yeah, he created good, but he also created evil. One must balance out the other. <laughs> so finally, Ephesians 1 and 4, which goes into when the chosen ones were chosen and we're going to end this video uh ephesians the first chapter the fourth verse we're just going to go right to the point well you know what let me start the third verse because it, it builds up blessed be the heavenly father and father of our lord yahweh shai who have blessed us who's the us is, is that talking about everybody everybody <laughs> like uh what is that Tariq nasheed everybody Hello, everybody. <laughs> is that talking about everybody? The answer is no, man. The letter that the Apostle Paul wrote was to the Israelites living in Ephesus. Okay? You simple-minded, wacky-tacky Christian. The letter that we're reading, this was a letter before it became a book. It was written by the Apostle Paul to the Israelites in Ephesus, who were calling themselves Ephesians, which was a city it's called Turkey today. Okay, Ephesus is located in the land of Turkey today. Okay. Blessed be the Heavenly Father and the... And the now check this out. Here's, this, here's the separation right there. Blessed be the Most High and Father of our Lord, Yahweh Shai. Now I have this crackpot who he, undoubtedly is going to watch this video. And he's going to comment on it with, with, his, with his retarded comments. His doggerel, which is monotonous, boring speech. Right? Saying that the son of the Heavenly Father is the Heavenly Father. Here we see a distinction here. It says, blessed be the Most High and Father of our Lord Yahweh Shai. So there's a separation right there. You have the Father and you have the Son. But he can't see it. Because the Heavenly Father had blinded him. He's not part of the elect. Okay? Uh, reading on. Who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Yahweh Shah. And that's what we have. We have. Man, we're rich, man. Like the scriptures say, we are rich in faith. You know, we're known of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Man, oh my goodness. That's powerful indeed. Now here's, here's, the, here's the point. According as it as he have chosen us so you don't choose him he chooses you like he chose moses moses didn't choose the heavenly father the heavenly father chose moses and sent them on a mission so if it was true for moses it's true for all of the elect the heavenly father have chosen them even before the earth was created there were spirits special spirits chosen to do a special work on the planet earth and we believe by faith we're of that ilk and our works show it our understanding of the scriptures show it. Okay? We have the understanding of the scriptures that not too many people have. And we're making an impact, man. We, through the power and spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, we are making a heavy impact on this planet Earth concerning the knowledge of this Bible, the true knowledge of this Bible. And we've been on, on the YouTube ever since 2007. We're making a huge impact. Okay? And when I say we, begin to fell the apostle on down. 
according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. That's when the chosen one was the chosen ones were chosen, okay? Even before the earth was created. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Yeah, there you go. It reminds me of what the Apostle Paul said, Who shall lay anything to the Most High's elect? It is the Most High that judgeth. So we are special individuals, man. We are truly special. You know, members of the hopeful elect, they are precious. The scriptures say precious are the elect in his sight. So we are precious, man. And we have a precious, special work to do. <laughs> Whew, that's powerful, man. That is tr extremely powerful. Anyway, I'm going to end it there. I believe I've said enough. All right. Hopefully you were edified by this video. If you was, drop a line in the comment section as usual. And it's on to the next one.